Ladies and gentlemen of the crypto space, we're live on a Monday, February 21st at 11.21 a.m. I don't know about you guys, but these markets are the markets to look at. These are the most exciting markets there are. When we look at the equities markets, oh, I see is things that I talk about openly. I see abuse. I see frustration. I see anxiety. I see people trying to understand a market that makes no freaking sense. It's a completely manipulated market in a sea of the biggest whales of whales filled with just ex extraction of, uh, of capital raise from the general public and complete, uh, com complete lack of any... Any expression of understanding uh, of, of, of the burden the general public faces. These companies give people nothing. They give people scraps and they take everything from them. I, I just, it's so disappointing and a, a, not unnerving, but uh, it's just absent any integrity. They it's just pure capitalism, I guess. It's You get what you get. It doesn't matter how you got it. And once you got it, you hold on to it. And if they have a capacity to extract capital from the general public, that's what they've done. They inflate their shares. They sell their shares. The general public buys their shit. And the people that understand how these systems work, very much how Drunk of Noah talks about it, uh, they navigate these markets. They sell. They sell when the retail purchases all the shit. They're left holding the bag. And this is what happens time and time again. Now, what's interesting is that in the crypto space, we see this happen on much shorter time horizons. We we see this very much with you know rugs. That is what a rug is in many regards. But we see this also with legitimate projects that launch. And they're trying to do the right thing. But you have large market actors that come in and buy large quantities of assets, and they do exactly what I'm describing uh, in the equities markets. But they do it over shorter time horizons. They manipulate the crap out of the general public's lack of capacity to navigate these markets. One second, guys. I'm sorry. Bye, honey. <laughs> Um, so where are we? We're in a market that is overwhelmingly bearish. We're in a market that is not necessarily prime for manipulation. It's just fear is pervasive right about now. Um, it is much easier in such markets to identify manipulation. And I don't see that occurring because there's less market actors to manipulate. And in these markets, it's more imperative than ever to not try and see the outright manipulation but to fall back on your fundamentals, which is the topic I wanted to talk on, and narratives, and and how narratives persist until invalidated. And this is the reason I'm excited, and I started the stream with the sentiment I expressed, is that this, this is the time, guys. This is the market that this is where you make the biggest difference in your future, understanding what's going on and why it's going on, because all the shit, all the fluff, all the uh, the hyperbole, all the uh, exuberance, now it's been evacuated. And you get to see protocols for what they are. You get to see capital flow uh, th through the markets uh, you, from participants that are actually doing real things and not just uh, gambling with degeneracy and driving valuations up and then it dumps. And that's just the, the historic concentration of wealth from the person who was new to the person who was early and in crypto that happens to be large quantities because someone comes in you know a couple million dollars into a 20 million dollar uh, protocol and they just suck the capital right out and i'll show you uh, it's right in the charts take a peek i mean look, look at any swap this thing was a heck of a rip i i happened to buy right around 16 and i rode this right up i held it because i thought there was a narrative at play and I thought there was a fork, and I thought there was geometry, and I, if you pull up the moving averages and other charts, and and there was reason to believe that there was a directionally upward momentum, spe specifically because there's a, f a fixed supply at this point. There's no emissions, there's no inflation, but um, narrative was invalidated. Uh, we were hoping for V multi sooner, and uh, if you get the time horizon wrong, that to me that was a narrative invalidation. I got the time horizon completely wrong, and 
the exit was decent, so I didn't uh, I didn't misallocate capital for too long a period of time. I think I got out around nineteen, right around here, around nineteen and change. But uh, th this is just confirmation, just confirmation that it's not going ahead to where we want it to head in a short period of time. And what's interesting is this is a period of time where I'm starting to see what has worked in the crypto space. And VE is one of my 2022 narratives that I talked about on December 21. That's a big thing. And it's the proliferation of curve monetary policy. But it's not just curve, it's convex. And it's not just convex, it's the bribery component, it's gauges and voting rights and emissions direction, or the, the, the directing of emissions vis-a-vis -vis voting. And that has a new piece of evidence suggesting it creates significant stickiness with regard to uh, uh, to capital flow. It's, dr it's driving a huge amount of capital into beats. I mean, look at this chart. That's just VE hasn't launched and the narrative that VE would launch and there'd be a huge amount of payout. So payout isn't enough. Cash flow isn't enough. It's part of it because obviously with uh, gauges and voting and bribery, there, there's payouts. But VE payouts of protocol cash flow isn't enough. We see that. It is shown. So the narrative there has been invalidated. But what do we see here? If we go over to Beats, we see that the bribery system, the bribery system, which came online right about there, marked a directional change in the price action of the asset, considering high emissions, a meaningful inflation rate, and macro conditions, directionally upward momentum, sure, you get to a ceiling, you can have bearishness, but generally speaking, the fact that it's not going down like every other asset, considering the macroeconomic conditions, oh, that's meaningful. So this is confluence suggesting um, gauges and voting and what has historically been called bribery that really warrants a terminology update uh, is effective at creating stickiness even for an inflating supply and that's crazy so while others are fearful in bear markets all i see is an explosion of information just an outright dump of clarity where t t in exuberance you don't see shit all you see is price action that goes completely vertical. I mean, you see it all over the place. Look at that. It was at 43 bucks. You go over to Convex. You get nothing out of exuberant markets. Let's zoom out to the weekly. You get nothing out of exuberant markets. Look at this thing. This thing was up at 60 bucks. Even Curve. Let's zoom out, go to the weekly. And this thing was up at 680. Down at uh, two and change. You see it all over the place. Exuberance tells you nothing. So, unfortunately, the general public plays exuberance, but the market actors, us, folks that really want to understand the way the system works and the way capital flow works, need to understand that this is the market. This is the exciting market. This is where you peer through the madness and you get to see what systems are being built and what has all likelihood the capacity for exuberance in the future. I mean, let me, sh what, where is it? Am I, I don't have it up, but I was actually, here's Bitcoin. I was looking at Bitcoin, but I, I was going to show you even this. Even Doge, uh, USD, I want a history chart. Bitrex? Yeah. So even Doge, you know, the exuberance is extraordinary, but it has some serious stickiness, which is really weird. So obviously, we could have full on continuation with, you know, depreciation, but maybe there's something here. And you only see that in bearish market conditions. You only see through the bullshit. So why are people holding it? What does that mean psychologically at a societal level? So clearly you have a TWAP break on the monthly. So this has bearishness written all over it. But this is a falling wedge. 
which is a, a pennant, bolt pennant of sorts. So maybe you have a fake out breakout. Not that I'm taking a position in any of this, but this thing tends to rip multiples. Ten multiples. Mul many multiples. Look where it's come from. Extraordinary, the multiples that it has produced. And we have to make many considerations, uh, concentration of ownership, so on and so forth. So there's a massive amount of risk. If anything, this is a useless asset. We've already talked about that. But what's pertinent is that it attracts uh, market actors that drive it up multiples. So it has a capacity to offer capital gains plays, which is something I hate. You know that, guys. But when you can get a 10x in a relatively short period of time, someone else is going to take it. So sometimes you might as well be the one taking it. We see people could have better things to do with the capital than, than just pure vultures and predators and scavengers. So I don't know. I found this interesting. From a technical perspective, this looks like a hell of a setup. I mean, seriously, people bought at 74 cents. It's down at 13 cents. You know, the tip is at 8 cents. And I would say a blow-off bottom, 3, 4, 5 cents. And you're talking, that's devastation for people that bought up here. But then again, look where it came from. I mean, in 2018, the high was 1.8 cents. You, so you're still 300%. If, you, if it dips to three cents you're still 300 150 to 300 percent depending on where in this region it dips to from the previous all-time high in 20, 2018 what does that mean who the hell buys this shit but that that means something a lot of people do buy it this one hurts my brain hurts my brain significantly let's go back to bitcoin for a second coinbase so what what would I love to see with Bitcoin? I would love to see a previous resistance flip support. And that'd be a confirmation of a heck of a narrative, you know, and that depicted in a technical form means people are going to enter the market about 20,000. If we get a, a wick to 20,000, for me, especially if it, if it's below and you have like a close on the weekly like if you that would be incredible if you see a close on the weekly it wicks to like 15 14 and then a close on the weekly above 20k or the daily and then you get further confluence and then you you guys know the way i talk with a, a dip below it holds a retest and then a higher high so previous resistance flips support than the higher high. And what does that mean? What does that mean? All this shit was irrational exuberance. An aberration. Which means it means nothing. It just means it's people out misallocating capital. But there's the narrative. The narrative is that. Previous resistance, flip support, higher high. What do we know about technicals? Support holding as support is bearish, or is, uh, is weakness. Resistance holding as resistance is bearish. And a resistance flipping support is bullish. So you could rip entirely down to there. That's a heck of a bullish technical sequence. Now, obviously, other folks do substantially more sophisticated technicals than myself i look at it more from a psychological perspective and i keep things simple but that's what i see nice and simple right there in the chart let's go through some comments i help you guys out see what i can do today dave oh good morning killis is in the house Pravin, good morning patrick what's up dude another day another day crypto so, uh, prophetic poet, here we go. Time to gather jewels on capital management. Try our best around these parts. Complicated times. Manipulation of the market is absurd. Yes, but we see it. Come on, look. If this is all irrational exuberance, everything post-20K, and we get a resistance flip support, you know, you talk about multi-year time horizon for the assets narrative to emerge, but that would be a heck of a price point for a resistance to flip support. That means a lot. That means a lot with regard to the psychology at play with the general public and the directionality of of how society is evolving as um, 
as an organized structure where capital is flowing because historically it was a resistance which means oh nobody's going to put any more money and it's never going to get back above that price point it blew right past it and now oh my god it got to that price point i'm going to plow all my money in because uh that that seems low it seems like a low price point that'd be an incredible psychological occurrence if 20k flips historic resistance and the support there was never a retest there was never a retest this is just long time horizons in play two years but that's okay so that that this is why in many regards bitcoin <clears throat> is a difficult asset to play so the time horizon for the plays are getting longer. Well, I guess Bitcoin always had its four-year cycles. But I love the altcoins because the time horizons are much shorter. You see the exuberance. You're able to see these trend formations. And they happen over months, not weeks. So there's much more activity and a much greater capacity to see these psychological uh, components of, of the price action play out without having to wait years time horizon is such a hard thing to play and, and this you know i remind you guys the title of the stream um when you're playing like a five ten year time horizon it, it takes a lot for confluence uh, to uh to be accumulated for con uh, confirmation or invalidation but the shorter term narratives or the short the, the, the smaller market cap assets it takes less time and a bit of less confluence, or at least you get that confluence, you aggregate that confluence faster. All right. Uh, Lewis, my man, I love the crashes because it shows me what to change, swap, and clearly show rotation of assets by larger players every time. Yes. And when you, it leads to concentration of the portfolio. It leads to invalidation of the narratives. It leads to redirection or reimagination of where the markets are heading. Um, it's meaningful and there's nothing wrong with capital loss as long as your losses are less than your gains which means you're playing both the bearish market conditions and the bullish market conditions with intelligence so the bearish market conditions is a period of time where you're cutting the losers you're adding to winners you're trimming optionality you're concentrating and i would say rather than diversifying but you're you're concentrating into things that are outperforming on the way down uh diversifying i would say on the way up uh not excessively um depending on how far we are into bullish market conditions in some regards uh you want to the, the same applies you want to add to the winners and cut the losers equally in bullish market conditions but you want to diversify and add optionality so on and so forth the same rules apply to bullish and bearish market conditions what the hell am i talking about <laughs> let's go uh larry's in the house always a pleasure any thoughts on the potential magnitude of a stock market decline i'm hoping down 40 50 percent uh, there's no way to say what i know is um Macro conditions are incendiary at this point. If we take a peek at what's going on, see Russia's currency is absolutely decimated, and the Fed hasn't even raised rates yet. And what's fascinating, uh, let's look at onshore CNY USD. If you look at the the, the yuan, that thing is ripping. That's crazy. I mean, it's not one for one, obviously. It's, 0.15 but still that's that's crazy considering the way um um other currencies are responding let's just look at the dxy i mean even the the dollar is just rallying uh, it's just trading horizontal here but if we get above that 100 mark it's going to look scary for other currencies but surprisingly the yuan is expressing strength in these market conditions um they rip if they rate when they raise rates uh it puts it increases the, p the power it tends to be dollar bullish point being that is uh depressing on the relative value of foreign fiat and the ruble is absolutely decimated so their back is against the wall with regard to their international purchasing power this thing's been absolutely crushed since 2000 absolutely crushed so 
they don't like hegemony. They don't like it at all. And uh, they're stockpiling gold, and they're not holding U.S. treasuries. And this is a whole conflict that dates back 20, 30 years since the fall of the Soviet Union. They're pissed. And this is the way a lot of currencies look around the world, other than the Chinese yuan. Um, let's look at yen real quick. Let's look at... Um, uh, Nah, let's a skip currency. Let's talk about your comments. I'll help you guys out. Um, so that stock market declines. I, I don't have a, an estimate, but, but but let's take a look real quick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place today. Let's look at ES. I mean, this thing looks like shit. I'd love to see a, a retrace to 33.95 and have it intersect uh, the 50 SMA on the monthly chart. And guess what? That would be a historic resistance flip support. <laughs> It'd be bullish. And now it's looking like a damn crypto chart. <laughs> uh, well, the retest. You want the retest and then the higher high. But now it's looking like a crypto chart, and this is all just bullshit. Also, just bullshit fluff. So that's a, that'd be a heck of a dip. There's your double-digit percent, Lewis. 33.98 historic retest. The resistance flip support with the higher high. We'll see what plays out. Who plays this shit? It pays nothing. You had no access to cash flow. You guys saw what I posted this morning, or at least an hour ago. Nothing interesting at all. Shisha, absolutely nothing is gone. Mike C., what are your thoughts on uh, Biffy? Um, Biffy Finance is interesting as an aggregator. Tokenomics are not interesting at all to me. Um, I need more. I need a narrative. And for me... I'm I'm 44% risk off, 44% in stables, in synthetic dollars, and you guys know how I talk about that as being the bo most bullish narrative in all of crypto. Um, there's few narratives at play in the crypto space that are the most meaningful, and I tend I'm a reductionist, so I tend to isolate what is the most meaningful production of the crypto space and i have my narratives i have seamless cross-chain uh, interoperability i have uh, seamless cross-chain liquidity provisioning or automated liquidity provisioning um, but those are relatively long-term time horizons for the crypto space but there's a couple of short-term narratives at play and i don't give a shit whether it's a bearish market condition i'm gonna wa be careful with um with price action and watch your rationality. Uh, but this is some serious tech. Look at this price action. This is part of the narrative that I'm seeing confluence, suggesting confirmation that there's validity to what I'm seeing. Why would an asset be going up in value in such bearish market conditions considering the inflation rate on the asset? Because of the gauges and the voting. That aligns incentives of the market actors to purchase and hold rather than liquidate for capital gains. That's crazy. And the other one is, is Phantom, Phantom in general, and the giant, giant federation of protocols, 25 protocols across the entire Phantom ecosystem. That's crazy. That's a massive federation of protocols working together. And you got to remember that, that bribery is built into Solidly it and to top it all off the ve 33 tokenomics that's on another level because it's not inflationary it's disinflationary or at least the inflation rate is inversely proportional to the lock rate which means the inflation rate is inversely proportional to the quantity of persons aligned with the protocol that have values aligned with the protocol where they're not selling, they're holding and locking. So there's less and less. This is going to be a freaking scarce asset. So my sentiment there is um, this is how I'm exposed. I took the, the LP positions to get um, solid as an emission. Now, these are small. This is 2% or less of the portfolio. So Guys, don't go out there and get crazy and fuck up your portfolio in a bear market. This is two percent or less of the portfolio, so don't judge the size. It's, it is what it is. But notice what I've chosen. So I've chosen uh, impermanent loss, 
absent assets, Bula Expo, Beads F Beads, uh, WFT M Tomb. So these are equal value, more or less. Expo obviously is different, and they're variable pools, they're not stable pools, but they're relatively equal value assets, or at least. Uh, not extremely volatile. There's a, relation, a fixed relationship and a slowly expanding relationship between Boo and XBoo, depending on how much cash goes through their protocol, but that's besides the point. The only one that has impermanent loss is Iron Bank, but Iron Bank itself is going to pay. In addition to their relatively large voting capacity to drive solid incentives to their LP position. So IB itself is also going to pay cash flow. Um, so I I think, and we'll see, uh, one of the most interesting spec plays is solid, but you can't buy it. It doesn't exist. And that Xerox DAO and SolidX, I'm not wasting my time on that shit. You know why? Because everyone else is thinking it's hot stuff. I'm not going to do what everyone else is doing. I'm not going to... What's the point? I'm chasing what someone else is chasing? So no. I'm going to grab myself some solid. The only way you can is to deploy capital to LP positions. And how, how did I do that? In a relatively rational way where I'm not exposed to permanent loss. I mean, Beats is going up in a freaking bear market. That's crazy. So don't overexpose yourself. You're going to get hammered if this shit turns south. So all the rules apply, and the narr look, narratives persist until invalidated. As of right now, this narrative is being confirmed by price action directionality. Let's see a breakout. Let's see a breakdown. And then you have price action that would potentially invalidate the narrative. And that's m most important to see and accept. If there's a breakdown in a narrative, you exit a damn position. You're holding this thing. You're getting hammered on price point, fifteen sixty-five. You're down ten, twenty, thirty percent. This is a clear head and shoulders right there. It's a remarkably clear head and shoulders. In many regards, this was a head and shoulders. Boop, boop, boop. So this is narrative. And even this is a damn head and shoulders. Boop, boop. <laughs> it's head and shoulders everywhere. This thing has dandruff. Love the narrative. I, I want to capture. So the narrative is not invalidated. Then maybe the narrative for the asset is, or at least it being a decent play. But I want to capture cross-chain liquidity. I want to cro capture cross-chain capital flow. And there's no real way to do it right now. You know, V multi doesn't exist. There's, you can't you can't allocate to the asset because it has depreciative directionality, and um, and that's that, and that's okay. I know that's a narrative I want to play out, but I don't have a capacity to be exposed to it. So for me, the most interesting thing right now in the markets is uh, is this federation of 25 protocols and V33 tokenomics. So I have to have patience. I'm not chasing. I'm not thinking 0x DAO or SolidX. Good for that. Look, that's confluence suggesting there's some serious coordination and serious federation going on around solid let those fuckers go do what they do let solid x the sex asset and let zero xd for zero x dow drive market actors to suck solid out of the market great i'm gonna have my solid position and everyone else is going to be chasing after uh, the second best way to accumulate it so i know that like solid x and zero xd have overtones of convex but solid is not curve. A curve has a hyperinflationary emission schedule, meaning there's an excess of supply, which needed convex to suck it out of the market. Solid does not have a hyperinflationary. In fact, it has not just a disinflationary, it has an inverse relationship between uh, the emissions rate and persons aligned with uh, the protocol. So. My expectation is for this to be an extremely, extremely scarce asset, which means, very interestingly, you can have very, very high APYs, uh, APRs on, on the LP positions with very low quantities of solid being uh, emitted. So that's, that's extraordinary because we can have extreme price appreciation. 
which is very interesting. But there's not an opportunity. There's nothing to buy. So stop chasing around trying to figure out what to buy and remain rational because at any time, this thing could fall off a cliff. DXY could rip through 100. That was a DXY. Maybe you see bonds rip over the, the 10 SMA in the yearly and the entire system explodes because the federal government won't have enough tax revenue to pay interest on the debt. So please be smart in these markets, guys. Good, uh, good morning, V. Joe in the works. Just an FYI. I know Joe took your fancy when I have X launch, keeping an eye on it. Yeah, it's worth to keep an eye on. So VE isn't enough. That's probably the most interesting thing we've seen in the last weeks. It's, it wasn't VE. VE is meaningful because that's how you access unadulterated cash flow and you unfuck yourself from the legacy financial system. But the problem is VE is not enough to create stickiness. There's something about the bribery that encourages uh, protocol alignment of all market participants. They're like, oh my God, I want those bribes. And they fight over it. They fight over it. Look how Convex is playing out. Look at it. And look how Beethoven is playing out. So the bribery has big psychological components. Um, Larry, I've always stayed away from Convex because of the bribery terminology. I'm not too familiar with the incentive structure. How would you best describe it other than bribes? Uh... Uh, capital efficient uh, liquidity provisioning. I think that's an interesting statement. So protocols want to incentivize deep liquidity to their LP positions, so they deploy capital to uh, to for uh, for for market actors to direct those emissions that they have control over to uh, to various to the desired LP position. So it's a it's a capital efficient way for protocols to drive deep liquidity. Um, I guess that's the best way to describe it. Uh, Larry, I definitely uh, would like to take a position. Uh, be careful with positions. Just, just let me restart this uh, page. So I lost all your commentary. I got disconnected. Two seconds, guys. To wrap this up in a couple minutes. I got to get back to work. Um, oh, he guys got a lot of comments today. Uh, greetings from uh, Chengdu. My man, I'm happy to help anywhere you are in the world. It's all good. Ben Cohen did some analysis using BTC USD, taking into account the M2 money supply and BTC did test the previous all time high in summer. If you consider them, uh, let's take a look real quick. That's quite interesting. Um, BTC USD money stock not quite it's not there oh shit get the fuck out of here bro dude dude that's crazy Okay, I got some uh, twitting, twi twi tweeting to do. Oh, puffs, Schnigle poppers. I don't know. Some sort of crazy phrase. Damn. That's fascinating. Okay. And it's on log. Let's see. Let's see. No, uh, even on linear. Even on linear, it does as well. Very nice. Okay, that's downright fascinating, Adam. Quantified. Hey, Noah, hope all is well. Wondering at what point you'd be comfortable to deploy your stables. I'm going to wait for macroeconomic conditions to fix themselves. Uh, them talking about rate raises and balance sheet roll off, they're going to absolutely crush the markets. Uh, I will wait for March of 2020. Oh, what does that mean? I'm going to wait for the shit to turn bullish. I'm going to wait for a, a previous resistance to flip a higher high, uh, flip support, and then print the higher high. I'm going to wait for bullishness. You deploy in bullish markets. <laughs> Patience and prudence. If it takes a year, so be it. I'm going to get 15% anyway sitting in stables over the next year. Uh, Tyler, can you look at the convex chart real quick? Oh, wait, that's not convex. Here's convex. 
I have a convex position. I, this look at this purple box. It's a heck of a zone of price action congestion. I would say is this is the Moki fiasco. This is a rational exuberance. This is a this is a heck of a price action base. Uh, the question becomes whether it's a ceiling or a base, and I would lean towards more of a base, considering the quantity of protocols that are trying to accumulate it. I mean, how, where, where's the emissions to, to for this to be a ceiling? I don't I don't see that being the case. So my only two large positions, as you guys are well aware, is just fracks and convex. Everything else is small. Uh, total portfolio breakdown: fracks twenty two point six percent, convex fourteen point five percent, and stables forty four point three percent. And that's how we're hitting these markets. Everything else is four point five percent or less of the portfolio. Spell, Curve, Keeper, Cosmos, Ren, Osmosis, Bancor, Syscoin's up in there. There's a couple of other ones. Interesting stuff. Um, Kristen, uh, when will institutions put their money during a recession? Just cash and bonds. Uh, cash, bonds, gold. Uh, Yang Kang, uh, bear, bear, bear is a good time to build. This, this is the most exciting market I've seen in a long time right now. Right now. It's pretty exciting. Uh, uh, big bounce on spell. Hi, no, I'm not from Netherlands, but from France. My man. <laughs> Small world. Can you try to theorem? Not right now, my friend, but I. Uh, it, everything's bearish right now. It, I, I expect further depreciation on everything. Looking at the curve chart, it doesn't seem like the VE tokenomics ended up working in terms of creating big enough deflationary pressure, given its inflationary nature. That's correct, which is where uh, convex comes in to create that deflationary feedback loop. So what is really the manifestation or the end result of curve tokenomics was, uh, was a failure. Uh, but convex came in and really showed us something meaningful about uh, how protocols can work together, form federation, uh, align market actors uh, with, with the protocols, uh, drive incentives, uh, uh, augment monetary policy, so you have synergies between the protocols. Uh, and I think that's really the evolution uh, of where the future of DeFi heads. Uh, and the bribery was a big one, and that's, you know, was that middle of last year that started to come online? and Beethoven is providing significant confluence, suggesting that is a meaningful uh, function that aligns actors with the protocols. And I'm probably the most exciting thing right now is uh, solidly. I think it's going to be potentially massive. But, you know, like when I say that and I say I'm super bullish, there's nothing to get. There's nothing to buy. So stop trying to – folks should not read into my shit as like alpha. So, yes, it's alpha, but it's alpha from a narrative perspective. It's not like, oh my god, he talked about solid token. I'm going to take my entire college uh, uh, tuition and buy it. It doesn't work like that. It's the narrative, and how to attach to that narrative is what matters. And you have to attach to it rationally, which is why we talk always on the stream about rational portfolio management. So I'm so bullish about the narrative. The federation, the, uh, the the bribery, and then and and, and uh, the, the demand from Xerox DAO and SolidX, and the inverse relationship between emissions and and lock rate. It's crazy. It really is. <clears throat> it might be might be one of the biggest things in a long time. Risky crypto morning cap. Gail's in the house. Good morning, Noah. No F position. Conspicuous lack of network gas tokens. No F position. Uh, no, I don't take it. I don't take really positions in Ethereum. <laughs> so Tokamak, Liquid Driver, and stuff like that, uh, Kristen, that's big stuff. I wouldn't hold any of that stuff, though. But what they are is components of synergy, and they're part of the Federation. Uh, they facilitate stickiness uh, on protocols. So how they will end up with regard to price action, I don't know. All I give a shit is that Tokamak incentivizes the crap out of protocols like Frax and stuff, and it, and it drives people to lock. So it drives people to not liquidate. Uh, and that's what's meaningful to me. Am I interested in those assets? No. Lynch, your top dog, Noah, follow you on Twitter. It's a pleasure. I try and help out as best as I can. I'm starting up this new stuff. Uh, set more which is a cool software provider I found. Not class here. 
So it's going to uh, allow me to take appointments and I'll be able to help people with a one-on-one -on -one type uh, thing. I wonder why it's not loading. Yeah, not class. Not class. All right, guys, I'll just show you real quick. So you'll be able to book appointments. So I'll have hours wherever the heck you want. It's going to be pricey because I'm swamped. I got to get back to work, but um, that's the deal. 9 a.m., 8 p.m., Monday through Friday, Monday through Sunday. I'm just going to do it seven days a week. But you guys will be able to get me if you need any help uh, attacking the portfolio as best possible. I wish you all a wonderful day. Monday, February 21st at 12.02 p.m. As always, tell everyone to subscribe. Have the party on Discord for the most rational community in the entire crypto space. You guys know the deal by now. I wish you all a wonderful day. Stay rational. I'll see you again on Wednesday. Peace.